Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching for Utek. Two months before we created the first video of Super Air OS for the Nothing Phone 1 there we did in depth review of first build of Super Air OS. Later we got the several builds but on the 12th April we got another update which has fixed up several issues. Flashing of this ROM is simple you can check the video link given under the video description. Today in this video we will do in depth analysis of chain lock and fixes done by the team. We will check its performance and stability in comparison with the old build and will confirm is it improved or not. Finally, I have shown some bugs that still present in this ROM. So watch the video till the end. Now without further ado, let's get started. It's a new After clean flashing of the ROM phone booted to the stock Super Air launcher. Now let's jump to the board phone to check the details of the new update. This is the same Android 13 with the material clocked easter egg. Super Air OS version is 13. Finally we got the latest security patch of April 2023 via this ROM. Build date of ROM is 12th April 2023. Kernel is the main part of this update change log. Its version is 5.4.223. Build it with the latest Clang toolchain version 14.0.6. Kernel supports the WireGuard now. It has the updates added from the Nothing OS 1.5. Kernel is enforcing. So lots of changes has been done from the kernel side and ROM is based on the all the latest sources. First we will check out the performance. Initial impression of ROM is good. It feels smooth but sometimes you may feel jitter or lag. It always runs on the 120Hz but goes down to the 60Hz when screen is not in use but rises back to 120Hz when you touch the screen. If you enable the force 120Hz using the developer setting, it will constantly run on the 120Hz in all scenarios. Only camera application will lower down the screen refresh rate to the 60Hz. Let's run the Geekbench test now. In the first test, I got the score of 752 and 2212 for the single and multi-core respectively. Which seems very low till the date I seen. So I ran the test one more time to reconfirm the results. In the second round, I got the score of 752 and 2358. Still these scores are not so high. If you check the last update review video there, I got the score of 811 and 3021. That build scores are very high and they ranked the ROM at the first place but now the place gone down to the last in the rank. Later I did the Geekbench test for the OpenGL graphics performance. Here I got the score of 1815. Here scores are nearly same as other custom ROMs but for Hurkan graphics I got the score of 2337. For old Super Heroes build we didn't done the OpenGL performance test but we did the Hurkan graphics API test and it was 2741. Actually that time Superiors ranked second place for the Hulkan Graphics API score but now it's nearly same like the other custom ROMs. Though this time results gone down still performance of the ROM is top. It feels smooth most of the time. Let's do the another test called as the user interface jitter test. Use the app given under the video description called as the UI bench to test this. While running the test user interface jitters remains below 0.5 millisecond most of the time which is very good result. But when you leave the application and try to use some other applications graph seems elevated to the higher values above 3 milliseconds. Which shows there is some jitter may happen in such scenarios. Overall ROM seems pretty solid without too much jitter. Its scores mostly ranged below the 0 0.5 millisecond. Now let's do the CPU stability test using the CPU throttle. I ran the test for the 5 minutes on the 20 threads. In first attempt, surprisingly, I didn't see any type of CPU throttling. Whole graph was green, not a single red or yellow line appeared in the graph. And when I stopped the test, it showed no CPU throttling happened. I surprised because I never got such results. I thought it's something buggy, so I did one more test and I got the same result. Device temperature was also seems normal and it didn't rise during the test. But after 2 to 3 hours I did the test one more time. This time graph started to show the throttling issue after one and a half minute till the end of the test and I got the score of 74%. Maybe first test were buggy and this time we got the real results that show the CPU throttling issue for all the Android 13 based custom ROMs. Temperature during this test risen between 42 to 55 degrees Celsius. I will do the few more CPU throttling test and will report soon in the comment section. 
Are these results persisting or not? Let's start the in-depth analysis of new change log. First is the team has added the Google call recording in the dialer. It's working but the recorded calls will not found under the call log section. It will be available in the storage and under the call recording folder of the file manager. Next under the superior lab and inside the lock screen tab we get the toggle to enable the under display fingerprint on the off screen. To use the fingerprint in this mode we have to just place the finger on the fingerprint position of the phone. It will detect the fingerprint and unlocks the device instantly. Next the major bug of microphone issue has been fixed. I tested the microphone and this time it seems more sensitive as compared to the previous build. I also did some calling and sound quality for the both the parties on the call is clear without any issues. Next I added the glyph interface header image in the setting. There is no additional features were added this time. All old features are present here like glyph light brightness slider, call animation, notification animations, battery level and flip to glyph. In this flip to glyph call animation and battery indicator are working. Only notification animation has issue that we will discuss under the bug section of the video. Now developer added the latest camera from the nothingverse 1.5.3 in this superior OS. It has some features working but some features are buggy that we will discuss at the end in the bug section. In this build developer has improved the screen brightness. Now screen height brightness level increased somewhat as compared to the previous builds. As per the change log safety net passes by default but actually from the first build I think it's passing successfully. Now let's discuss the most important part that is bugs and issues. First bug is for the glyph light notification animation is not working. It's not blinking for any incoming notification. This bug was persisting from the first build of superior OS. Some other bugs are related to the nothing OS camera. Slow motion video shooting and portrait mode front selfie pictures are not working. Even though we text the slow motion videos or the portrait pictures, they are not getting saved in the storage. Next issue is the no glyph light flash is available in the camera. But you can use the glyph light tile available under the quick setting panel to use the glyph light as a flash for the camera. The most common issue of wideband security as L3 is also persisting here. So we can't able to stream the Netflix or Amazon Prime at the full HD resolution. Other missing feature is no wireless charging available in this ROM. It's only available for the Pixis OS till the date. Except these bugs or the issues I didn't found any of the issues. ROM is pretty solid and highly recommended as a daily driver if you want a highly customizable ROM with the decent performance. That's it for today guys. Hope you liked my work. Then please do like and share this video. Subscribe our channel. Press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.